So, so the answer to the question is, should magicians be involved? Well, it depends on the magician. Randy, do you, uh, do you have some thoughts on uh, this magician involvement in the scientific investigation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a couple of points, if I may, very quickly. Please. First of all, on, on the first point that was made here, that uh, learning magic makes you a better skeptic. I'm glad that the board came to, a, to a, a, an agreement <laughs> on that, and I certainly agree with everything they've said on it. Because you need, and I think the folks may agree with me here, as a magician, you need a very deep understanding of how conjuring works. That is, fake act of doing magic tricks. You need a very deep knowledge of that, that a superficial knowledge of of a thumb tip that exists. Oh, wow, there's a big secret. Dun, dun, dun. And, you know, exactly, right. a little fanfare, please. But if you know <laughs> 40, 50, 100 tricks, if you don't have a basic understanding of the psychology, uh, the methodology behind it, all the, the funny little things that you need to know to be a competent magician, then you are not the kind of guy to call in by the parapsychologist and sit there. Look what happened with the parapsychologist who called in uh, magicians to test Geller. Mm. These people were total incompetence, right. and they, they didn't know enough about the magic art, the deep <coughs> meaning, the, the real principles behind the art of deception. They didn't know enough about that, and they were taken in by Geller at the same time. So you can't attain that depth of knowledge just by learning magic tricks. That's the first point. The second point was the expression half smart. Think about that a great deal. Half smart is not smart at all. It's just smart enough that you can be sucked in and completely eaten up by these, these, these fakers out there. Don't be half smart, be all smart or forget it. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I get academics who come up with this business after I talk to them at the foundation or after a show or whatever, and they sit there and they say, you know, I, I just can't believe all of these people who believe in this paranormal crapiola, that's a technical term, by the way. Um, I can't believe that. They must be really stupid. No, they're just uninformed. They're like the, 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 the vast majority of people out there who just don't know how these tricks are done. And if I get the opportunity, if I'm near a bookstore, if I'm in a library, I've, and if any place with more than 30 or 40 books, I will do that, the best goddamn book test you've ever seen <laughs> with these people. Go to that shelf and take two books off the shelf and bring them over here. And then I'll blow them away with it, and they'll rear back and they'll say, that wasn't a trick, was it? <laughs> yes, it was, and I fooled you with it because you're not all that damn smart. Don't give me this story that these people <laughs> are stupid because they fall for the psychic tricks. Mm. No, they're just uninformed. And our job at the JREF and in the whole skeptical community is to try to inform people somewhat better, but not by teaching them how to do magic tricks so they'll understand it. Those academics, I really jump on altogether because they say, well, they wouldn't fool me. Yeah, and then I go right ahead and I fool their asses right off them. <laughs> and they, they look and they say, oh my, I guess I can be fooled too. Uh, another point, if I may. Um, Tim Scheinberg, who's doing my, my biography, getting together details of stuff that I've totally forgotten. Uh, decades and decades ago, she comes up with all kinds of stuff from secret boxes someplace. I don't know where she gets it. But she came up with something very uh, interesting recently. I have often been asked, you know, if you had a dying relative or somebody really grieving, would you perhaps tell them a little white lie and say, you know, oh, maybe heaven does exist and such? Yes. Yes, because if there's nothing lost by allowing these people to believe in things that you know are patently ridiculous, yes. And then Kim came to me and laid this down in front of me. It was a copy of a letter that I sent to my grandfather many decades ago. I didn't know that I had a copy of that letter, but I did, a carbon copy of it. I sent it to my grandfather shortly before his death, after my grandmother had died, who he had lived with uh, up until the age of 94. My grandmother had died, and he was see seeing that his death was coming. 
inevitably, and uh, he wrote me and said something to the effect, uh, you know, I, I just don't know what your belief is on this, my grandson, but uh, I'd like to know. And I wrote him a letter, and I said in that letter, confession time, yes, granddad, I believe that you will probably be with Janie, your beloved wife, very shortly, and you will see the rewards of the, the exemplary life that you led together. That was a lie, a blatant, outright lie. But it was a white lie, and it worked. And I'm sure that that gave that old man some comfort as he closed his eyes for the last time. Yes, I will lie in that respect, because nothing is lost by it. But I will not do it under other circumstances.